In my remarks this evening, I hope to provide an assessment of the measures taken by the Central Bank of Nigeria, working with the banks, deposit money banks, and other financial institutions in Nigeria. In addressing the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the Nigerian economy, as well as our outlook for the, for the path ahead, pre-COVID economy. As we all are aware, prior to the onset of the virus in December 2019, the Nigerian economy was in a positive growth trajectory, having made a significant recovery from the 2016-17 recession, which was triggered by the drop in commodity prices in 2016. Following the recession, we witnessed 12 consecutive quarters of economic expansion and GDP growth in the fourth quarter of 2019 stood at 2.5%. Our exchange rate remained stable for over two years at 360 Naira around that band, and our external reserves witnessed significant accretion from the sale of crude and continued inflows from our, our foreign investor community. Our banking system remained strong as key indicators reflect improvements across several areas. Capital adequacy ratio for the banking industry was above 15%, surpassing the prudential requirement. The ratio of non-performing loans declined from 11% in April 2019 to less than 6.1% in January 2020. Our intervention efforts in the agriculture and manufacturing sectors continue to support employment generation activities and improved local production of goods that can be produced in Nigeria. COVID-19. The onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in the first half of 2020 and the general lockdown measures put in place to contain the spread of the virus caused an unprecedented shock to the global economy. Global economic activity, global economic downturn, which was particularly significant during the second quarter of the year, saw declines in growth in advanced and emerging market economies, such as the United States with a negative minus 9.5%, United Kingdom minus 20%, India minus 24%, and South Africa minus 17%. As a result, far-reaching measures were taken by fiscal and monetary authorities in advance and emerging markets to stabilize their respective economies. Like other economies, the Nigerian economy was not immune from the COVID-19 shock in 2020. Nigeria's GDP contracted by minus 3.4% during the third quarter of 2020 a welcome improvement from minus 6.1% recorded during the second quarter. The negative rate of growth was due to a series of external factors in addition to the lockdown measures imposed in order to curtail the spread of the virus. Some of the key constricting factors were crude oil, restriction on global trade by land and air, along with the slowdown in commercial activities, led to a significant reduction in the demand for crude oil. We contributed to a 65% decline in crude oil prices between January and May 2020. The drop in crude prices, along with the OPEC reduction of Nigeria's production quota, led to a significant decline in our foreign exchange earnings, along with a more than 60% decline in revenues due to the Federation account. Today, crude oil prices have recovered from its low of $19 per barrel in April 2020 to, to, to $45 per barrel in November 2020. But this is yet to return to pre-pandemic pre levels of over $60 a barrel as of January 2020. 
gross domestic product growth in the oil sector in the third quarter remains subdued due to the OPEC restrictions on oil output. Restriction on movement. GDP growth, particularly in the manufacturing sector, was significantly impacted by the restrictions on movements as many factories and businesses operated at limited capacity or none at all. In addition to a decline in demand for service-related activities, which require extensive in-person contact, such as transportation, hospitality, and tourism. On exchange rate, like other emerging market countries and, con and countries reliant on oil exports, the decline in crude oil earnings as well as the retreat by foreign portfolio investors significantly affected supply of foreign exchange into Nigeria. In order to adjust for the decrease in supply of foreign exchange, the Naira depreciated from 305 to 360 and subsequently to 380 Naira to the dollar. With the decline in our foreign earnings and successive exchange rate adjustments, the CBN has continued to implement a demand management framework, which is designed to bolster the production of items that can be produced in Nigeria and aid conservation of our external reserves. Due to the unprecedented nature of the shock, we have continued to favor a gradual liberalization of the foreign exchange market in order to smoothen exchange rate volatility and mitigate the impact which rapid changes in the exchange rate could have on key macroeconomic variables. This we believe is in line with international best practices in countries where managed flow arrangements are in operation. At the same time, measures have been taken by the authorities to improve our non-oil exports and other sources of foreign exchange. These measures have helped to prevent a significant decline in our reserves. Indeed, our external reserves currently stands at slightly over $35 billion and are sufficient to cover at least eight months of imports of goods and services. So there's no need to worry. Inflation. Inflationary pressures persisted during the year due to several factors. In addition to the disruption to global and domestic supply chains as a result of COVID-19, inflation was exacerbated by the increase in VAT rate from 5 to 7.5%, petroleum prices, electricity price adjustments, farmer header clashes, exchange rate adjustments and flooding that occurred in some parts of our farm, farm belt areas. Inflation in October 2020 stood at 14.2%. We however expect inflation to begin to moderate by the first half of 2021 as efforts have been made to enable significant cultivation and production of key staple items during the dry season and we're working very hard at this. What, the, what are the responses from the monetary and fiscal authorities? Given the impact of COVID-19 on key macroeconomic variables earlier mentioned, the monetary and fiscal authorities took unprecedented measures to prevent any long-term damage to the growth prospects of our economy. Our first objective was to restore stability to the economy by providing assistance to households and businesses that had been severely affected by the pandemic. In addition, we sought to stimulate economic activities through targeted interventions in critical sectors, such as agriculture, manufacturing, electricity, and construction. Cumulatively, our intervention efforts represented about 3.5% of Nigeria's GDP. Although we still consider this low, we believe a lot still needs to be done. 
Some of these inter some of these measures we took include one. The cumulative reduction of the monetary policy rate from 13.5 to 11.5 percent between May and September 2020, in order to spur lending to the economy. Two, a one-year extension of the moratorium on principal repayments for CBI intervention facilities. Three, regulatory forbearance was granted to banks to restructure loans given to sectors that were severely affected by the pandemic. Four, reduction of interest rate on CBN intervention loans from nine to 5%. five. Strengthening of the loan to deposit ratio policy, which has resulted in a significant rise in loans provided by financial institutions to the banking customers. Total gross credit rose by over 21% over the past year from about 15.5 trillion to 19.54 trillion. In addition, over 738 billion Naira has been provided as credit to manufacturing related activities by our banks. Six, the creation of 150 billion Naira targeted credit facility for to affected households and small and medium enterprises through the, our national microfinance bank. So far, 149.2 billion out of the 150 has been disbursed to 316,869 beneficiaries. We are happy that this was done because what this has achieved is tremendous because what we have achieved from this is that consumption expenditure has been greatly catalyzed by this those who those households who uh, who have been affected by the pandemic at least found succor in the fact that they were able to to access this unsecured credit just by pro providing the bank verification numbers and they got as little as four some as little as four hundred thousand naira to some small businesses as high as 2.5 million naira for them to recover their business back again Given the resounding success of this program and its positive impact on output growth, the monetary policy directed that we double this fund to 300 billion so as to accommodate many more beneficiaries and boost consumer expenditure, we should positively impact output growth. Seven. The bank also disbursed agricultural business, small and medium enterprise investment scheme, AXMIS, like 2 billion Naira to 24,702 beneficiaries. Anchor Borough's program for the wet season to the tune of 165 billion Naira to 954,279 beneficiaries. Seven. Mobilization of key stakeholders in the Nigerian economy through the coalition against COVID, known as CACOVID, which was able to put together over 40 billion Naira, and which led to the provision of over 28 billion Naira in relief, food relief materials to support about 1.8 million households and also establish 39 isolation centers across the country. Nine, creation of a 100 billion Naira intervention fund in loans to pharmaceutical companies and healthcare practitioners intending to expand and strengthen the capacity of our healthcare institutions. And so far, 60 healthcare related projects are being funded, indeed have been funded to the tune of 60 billion Naira as a result of this intervention. 10, creation of a research fund which is designed to support the development of vaccines in Nigeria. 11, the establishment of a 1 trillion Naira facility in loans to boost local manufacturing, agriculture, and production across critical sectors. 53 major manufacturing projects, 21 agricultural related projects, and 13 service related projects have been funded to the tune of over 360 billion Naira from this facility. 
What are the results of our interventions? The impact of these measures, along with the removal of restrictions on movement and, re and resumption of international travels, led to improvement in key indicators of the economy. As several economic activities returned to positive growth, Indeed, a couple of people had predicted that the negative output growth would for Nigeria, just like we saw in some other economies, would have been double digit. But luckily during the first quarter, we pleasantly saw a 1.88% positive, second quarter, a negative 6.1. And as a result of these efforts and measures that were put in place, we saw a moderation in negative output to about 3.6%. And this is the reason the central bank, even the monetary and fiscal authorities are saying that we are cautiously optimistic that Nigeria may ex exit the recession, but during the fourth quarter, if we continue to push our interventions, particularly to the households and small and medium enterprises, who actually consider a major fulcrum to development of our economy. Financial system stability. With the decline economic, in economic activities, the Central Bank of Nigeria insisted on measures in the banking system in order to prevent an economic crisis from spilling over into a financial crisis. In action on our part would have led to a wave of bankruptcies by firms, along with rising unemployment, which would ultimately have a significant impact on the balance sheet of our banks. As a result, we ensured that one, banks made adequate capital provisions to cover for unexpected losses. Two, we supported viable businesses that had been affected by the pandemic through access to more intervention funds. Three, we enabled banks to restructure loans granted to sectors affected by this pandemic. As a result of these measures, non-performing loans ratio has remained low at 5.7%. The capital adequacy ratio of the banking industry at 15.5% remains above the prudential requirement of 10%. In addition, return on equity, return on earnings in the banking sector was over 21% as at October 2020. Similarly, other financial institutions recorded a remarkable improvement as aggregate assets grew by 528 billion or 16.94% year on year to 4.02 trillion as at the end of September 2020. While the news of the continued growth in the banking and finance sector in the third quarter of the year is encouraging, the ultimate strength in our financial system will depend on three key factors. One, ensuring that banks have adequate capital buffers to withstand similar shocks and, pandem and pandemics when they occur in future. Two, Developing adequate internal controls that will, be, that will be able to identify potential risks to banks, such as standby threats, as well as putting in place measures to contain these risks. Three, being able to adapt your business models to changes taking place in the business environment. This last point, the third, is vital as COVID-19 has demonstrated the impact externally induced disruptions could have not only on the global economy, but also on the Nigerian economy. It is therefore imperative from an economic as well as security perspective that the banking and financial system works to support growth in sectors that have significant growth potential and can enhance the resilience of the Nigerian economy in the face of external shocks. Our outlook. With sustained implementation of our intervention measures, we do expect that the Nigerian economy could emerge from the recession by the first quarter of 2021. 
We also expect that growth in 2021 will attain 2.0%. However, downside risks remain as the restoration of full economic activities, particularly in service-related sectors, remain uncertain until a COVID vaccine is produced and made available to millions of people across the world. Second, with the significant rise in cases in advanced markets and the imposition of lockdowns in parts of Europe, concerns remain on the impact of impact this could have on growth in advanced economies, commodity prices, and the financial markets. We must therefore find ways to insulate our economy from the impact of these shocks through our diversification efforts, while also working to ensure that we adhere to safety protocols in order to prevent a surge in COVID-19 related cases in Nigeria, as this could further cripple economic activities once again. Our actions in 2021 will be guided by the considerations that emerged from the Monetary Policy Committee meeting held a few days ago on the 23rd and 24th, November 2020, which sought to address the major headwinds exerting downward pressure on output growth and upward pressure on domestic prices. And we do intend to tackle these measures very, very aggressively. Given the impact that the rise in inflation is not due to monetary factors, but rather the prevalence of structural rigidities and supply shocks, traditional tools of monetary policy may not be helpful in addressing current inflationary pressures. Rather, a more useful policy will be the supply side measures implemented by the bank. As a result, emphasis will be placed on strengthening the development finance initiatives of the Central Bank of Nigeria, working with close collaboration with our banks in order to stimulate greater production and reduce unemployment in our country. We intend and to increase our support for measures that will aid improved cultivation of local produce in Nigeria, with particular emphasis on improving our yield levels as food inflation continues to remain in the key drivers of inflationary trends for now. The banking sector therefore has a significant role to play as a facilitator of growth in the agricultural sector through its intermediation function. We will continue to appeal to the banks, but even where you refuse, we have our own plan B. Some of the opportunities in the agricultural sector that banks should explore include ways to address some of the existing gaps in the agricultural value chain such as storage centers, transport logistics, and technology platforms that can enable rural farmers to sell and transport their produce directly to the markets. These measures would help to improve productivity of farmers, reduce post-harvest losses, increase access to finance for farmers, and improve sourcing of local raw materials for processing by a manufacturing and industrial firms. It will also aid improved production of local goods, enable the creation of jobs, while supporting the growth of other sectors of our economy, such as the manufacturing and transportation on the ICT. Another sector which has emerged as a significant source of resilience in mitigating the impact of COVID-19 on the economy has been information and communication technology. During the third quarter of 2020, the ICT sector made contributions of over 17.8% to the GDP, 47% higher than its contributions a year ago. The growth of startups in the FinTech and healthcare space rose in response to the pandemic. It is important that we leverage ICT as an enabler for growth in key sectors of our economy. 
ICT startups are emerging to support SMEs, farmers, and in providing quality learning to students. It is important that the banking sector consider viable IT firms in these areas that have the potential not only to serve the needs of the local market, but also be able to export ICT-related services to countries across the world. India, for instance, exports close to $100 billion worth of ICT-related services annually. And I believe that our ICT industry has come of age and can make significant contributions to our export earnings as well. The Central Bank recently issued payment service banks licenses to three firms as part of our efforts to drive financial inclusion and ensure that majority of Nigerian citizens are banked. The payment service banks, along with mobile money operators and banks, are expected to leverage ICT channels in improving penetration of digital financial services and products to Nigerians. Driving sustainable growth of our economy will require that the banking industry support the growth of ICT firms that are inclined to improve productivity across key sectors of our economy, infrastructure finance. Another critical area that the banking sector ought to consider or should be considering for stable growth of our economy is infrastructure finance. With the decline in revenues due to the federal and state governments as a result of the drop in crude prices, alternative ways of funding infrastructure are critical if we are to generate sustained growth of our economy. As we all are aware, the cost of logistics is often seen as a significant impediment to the growth of businesses in the economy. A well-built infrastructure system comprising hard infrastructure such as roads and ports and soft infrastructure such as broadband penetration can have a multiplier effect on growth by enabling the expansion of business activities in the country. We believe that a well-structured infrastructure fund can act as a catalyst for growth in the medium and long term. The president has already given approval for the establishment of an infrastructure company, and we believe that the infrastructure company will, be very, will pay, play a very, very active role in the development of the Nigerian infrastructure, working with other private sector and development partners in 2021. The support of the banking community will therefore be important in achieving this objective. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, conclusion. In concluding my remarks, let me assure all Nigerians that monetary and fiscal authorities are alive to their responsibilities to restore the Nigerian economy back to recovery. But at this point, I also see this opportunity to appeal to Nigerians particularly our media economic analysts. We confess that the problem we face today is of global dimension and Nigeria is not alone. The global economy is today challenged. So Nigerian economy is not alone challenged. My appeal to our media analysts is that we would appreciate it that in the course of conducting their analysis of the Nigerian economy, that they should realize that their public comments, particularly if they sound alarmist, create panic in the economic environment and that to those whose BP are already rising, it could make them fall to the other side. We cherish their counsel, 
but we appeal to them to be careful in their pungent criticisms, which could hamper the efforts of the monetary and fiscal authorities to return our country and our economy back to recovery. When you overdramatize a problem, you create panic that slows the process of our recovery. Let's not forget that when you criticize an attack, you may think that you are attacking a person with the aim to pull him down. But as regards the economy, when you attack because you think it is aimed at pulling one man down, what you do, you are pulling all of us down. You are trying to pull the roof down over our heads and you will also be a casualty. Although the 2016-2017 recession was challenging for the authorities, Nigeria exited that recession in just after five quarters. Notwithstanding the challenges posed by the current crisis, we are very optimistic that Nigeria will surmount this challenge. And indeed, recovery is in sight. Let me also add that while COVID-19 has brought on several challenges to our economy, and indeed the banking sector, it offers a unique opportunity for us to build a more resilient economy that is better able to contain external shocks whilst supporting growth and wealth creation in key sectors of our economy. Proactive steps on the part of stakeholders in the banking and financial system in supporting the growth of sectors such as agriculture, ICT, infrastructure, will strengthen our ability to deal with the challenges that have been brought on us by COVID-19 while enabling the growth of our economy in general. I thank you most sincerely for your attention.